forgiveness is absolutely essential. That's what makes part the question also massive. Because Jesus says, if you don't forgive others, I won't forgive you. And so he puts a huge weight on that word forgiveness. So it's made it massive right there. Um, he's like, look, a lot of it is way banking on this one word called forgiveness. Because if you get this wrong, you're out, right? Pretty much. So that's pretty much how I read that phrase in Matthew 6, where he says, if you don't forgive others, neither will your father in heaven forgive you. He says that twice in Matthew 18 again. So that's massive. But as we deal with situations of where we're actually living in this life, we find that um, addressing it is difficult. And I'll just share with you some of my thoughts on this is there's words that I know we shouldn't do. So we have to forgive. So unforgiveness, we cannot do. We should put that in the don't do category, unforgiveness. Another word that we think, I think we can easily put into the, un, uh, into the do not do category is bitterness. Don't get bitter. Right? That's the word that you use to unforgiveness and bitterness. But there are some other words that are in the, I'm not so sure what to do about it, which is I'm hurt. There's the sense of being hurt by it. There's the question about trust that's also connected with it. And there's also the question of what do I do going forward about it? Um, level of interaction. And th this is kind of why it makes it so massive and difficult to do it. And how do I know these things? From experience, right? From experience where I've also been hurt and I'm not here to compare hurts because I honestly don't think I've been hurt quite like some others, maybe in, even in the room have been hurt, right? But to the extent that I've been hurt, you get to see that there are different words that are at play here. Words like hurt and sad and should I be able to trust people? And then there's also words like forgiveness and bitterness. And the Bible definitely tells us we should forgive. The Bible tells us don't be bitter. And I think walking through this journey is where we need a lot of help. And I think the Lord has to give us um, guidance on how to find out, Lord, I'm feeling hurt right now by what somebody did. Is that a sin that I'm feeling hurt? Um, but I don't want to be bitter and I want to forgive. Um, and I'd say even for me, it's a journey. I don't know if I have clarity on how I know for sure or where that line is. That, that's why I think that last part of the question was, and constantly trying to forgive. I'm struggling because I'm constantly trying to forgive. I have accepted that in my own life, it is going to be that where I'm constantly having to choose to forgive. And it's not a battle that I will win. It's a battle that I have to keep fighting and gain victories in, but it's never settled. Um, that's the current place where I'm at in terms of understanding how I'm going to resolve it. I'm not, I'm never claiming victory saying that's it. I'm never going to ever worry about forgiving this person because sometimes the hurt is continuous. Sometimes I have to see this person over and over again and it's a constant battle. So I found it easier at least for myself to know it's going to be a constant battle for the rest of my life. Now live with it and keep battling it. And what I do believe is I can experience repeated success. I can live in victory today. I don't worry about tomorrow. I don't worry about next week. I don't worry about next year. But today I want to live in victory, which means some things, right? Uh, I do not want, I, I, I like certain boundaries I put around what forgiveness looks like. I don't want bad to happen to them. That's something that's very important for me to really kind of do business with God and say, God, because there's such a tendency for me, people that hurt us to say, I want something bad to happen to them. And I have, I remember that it happened to me in one, one experience that I had, there was a boss that was very difficult for me to work with. And he was making life very difficult to me. And I remember one time he was supposed to come fly in from a different city where he was living. And I heard that he wasn't able to come because one of his children was sick and had to go to the ICU. And I know that my instinctive reaction when I heard that was like, that's what you get for messing with me. Right. And there was that flesh that popped up. That was like, you look what happens. God will punish you. You mess with the child of God. And I realized that I had to repent of that. Because 
And I don't say that that means that I had harbored all kinds of unforgiveness, but that was something that came out in the moment that I say, Lord, I want to judge myself and I want to hate that thought that wants bad to happen to other people. And I don't think I'm done with it. My flesh is evil through and through. So those thoughts can come into my mind, but I have to be so quick to crush it, to crucify it, to kill it. As I talked about it, right? To annihilate it. That's all the parts of self that are in there that I have to be disgusted by. And I think I wasn't disgusted by it. I think all I can say is, Lord, I want to be disgusted by these things that come up, which are evidences of clear unforgiveness. And Lord, I want to um, have the disgust over it. Not be surprised that it comes up, but, you know, if it comes up, I want to be disgusted by it. At least I know that it's an enemy, right? I don't want to, okay, if I find that rats come into my house, well, it was raining and rats tend to come in if you leave the door open. As long as I'm disgusted by the rat being in the house, well, at least then I'm on the right track, right? We can try to fix the holes better. We can try to fix the doors better. But once in a while, you know, a situation may happen where it triggers a memory and it'll come in. Well, as long as I'm disgusted by the unforgiveness and I say it's an enemy, I hate sin, then I can fight against it. Um, I don't want wish. I don't want to wish bad on such people. Um, love does not take into account wrong suffered. That's 1 Corinthians 13, somewhere in that five, six or whatever it is. So that's, that's what I want to do too going forward. Lord, I want to, don't want to take into account the wrong suffered. That may mean I don't want to hang out with them much. That may mean I have to walk tentatively around them. I, it may mean that I have to be very careful in how I interact with them. These are all possible things because I don't want to get hurt. But Lord, I don't want to hold it against them. So I don't want to wish bad things on them and I don't want to hold it against them. And you know, meditating on 1 Corinthians chapter 13 um, has been helpful for me. Meditating on how I have hurt Christ has been helpful to me to be merciful to others. That's another word that I to kind of try to grab a hold of. Lord, I want to be merciful. Um, allowing them, allowing to know that they too have matured in a way that I too have matured in the last few years. So while I've done some mean things and some hurtful things to people 10 years ago, and I say, look, but that's not me. I wish I've changed in the last 10 years. I hope I can give them that. Um, so I hope I've said in the things that I've said, some of the complexities in there, right? A couple of things to work on, 1 Corinthians 13, working on love, love your enemies. Jesus told me to do that. So I know that's part of his command that I need to work on. Um, but it's not easy to unpack it. I think 1 Corinthians 13, love is patient, love is kind. Love doesn't envy, you know, love doesn't take into account wrong suffered. There are things in there that I can meditate on. And as I apply those words and phrases to my difficult situation. Sometimes it's a spouse you can't get around with. Sometimes it could be parents that could be there. Sometimes it could be, you know, different relationships at work you can't get away with. It could be neighbors. So it's, com it's com complex. It's no simple answer. Um, I think it takes a lot of meditation, knowing, Lord, I don't want unforgiveness. I don't want bitterness because these are massive things that I know um, are things that will affect me and cause real damage. You know, it's called a root of bitterness. That if it's a root, imagine what that tree looks like, right? If there's that root, it can sprout into all kinds of filthy weeds and, you know, massive, ugly trees. So I really want to take care of the root of bitterness and any spirit of unforgiveness, knowing that it's going to be a battle for the rest of my life with some people. With some people, it's just going to be that way. I'm not expecting any mountain to thing. And then if suddenly five years from now, I find that I don't struggle with unforgiveness, praise God, the battles ended sooner than I thought it was, but I'm expecting a 50 year fight. Um, I felt like the Lord has given me that word for me for a few things. Like Sadiq, it's going to be a 50 year fight for you and humility. Just deal with it. You know, you and your pride, it's going to be a 50 year fight. Don't claim any victories before then, maybe 75 years till you're dead pretty much. So there's certain certain areas that I've just said for the rest of my life, I'm going to, going to have to fight it. My fight against pride, my fight against selfishness, my fight against unforgiveness of certain people. You, you're never won. You're never going to win. You'll win today. But that snake has so many children, has birthed so many children just because of the way you are. It'll keep you humble um, because you have to keep fighting that. So keep coming to me for grace and I'll give you grace for today. But you'll never be able to say you're done with it. And I think that's just the way some people rub you the wrong way. Some people have done things that have hurt you. That it'll just be that way. Right. And some people just speak that way towards you. That just rub you the wrong way. Or 
and you can't get rid of them because they're a neighbor or a coworker or a family member. So how do I find freedom from bitterness today? How do you constantly try to forgive? To, to try to forgive? I think there's only an answer for today. I can only give you that is, God, you need to get grace for today. Don't worry about tomorrow. It'll be there tomorrow. You'll need grace again for tomorrow. Okay, another question was, you know, look, feel free to ask follow-up questions some other time or whenever it is, but um, it's a huge question. I'm glad we got to address that first. 